What's going on, everybody? Welcome to another episode of Off the Couch Boxing. I'm your host, Reckless Rex Ruger. That is El Flaco Explosivo, the Alexis Arguello puppet. And I'm your other host, Frank Benjis. We're back with another. And our guest is already here. Let's get down to it and chop it up with a man. Excited about this one, man. Excited. We got him in here? Yes, sir. Yeah. We got you? Oh, wait. We lost your camera there, man. There what's, goes. what's going on? Good to have you on here, man. First of all, appreciate you doing this, man. A real pleasure getting the chance to talk to you, man. Appreciate it, Tom. Yeah. So listen, man, first of all, uh, full disclosure here, and I want to get this out of the way, man. I tried to go back and watch last night as I was preparing my notes and, and stuff I wanted to talk to you about. I wanted to go back and watch uh, uh, some of your fights. Oddly enough, the Dillian White fight seems to have been um, uh, scrubbed from the internet except for highlights. Is this because it's such a huge fucking embarrassment? Now, now allow me, obviously this is the 989 assassin here. Allow me to show you my scorecard right here. If you can see that right there, I had it seven five, and then uh, another bullshit robbery. I mean, that's I scored it seven five too. Honestly, in my opinion, I think it was seven five. Well, great minds think alike. I, you know, as a matter of fact, here I'm known as the three one five samurai. So just to put that out there. <laughs> but listen, stop, 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 get out. I got to say, Jermaine, though, man, uh, I, I mean, come on, man, seriously. But, you know, I don't want to dwell on, you know, I don't want to be sour grapes, man. You took it like a man. That's one thing that I like about you, man, is 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 you you show a great demeanor and a lot of poise, even in all the buildups to these fights, man. You seem to be have a laser focus, man. You don't seem to get pulled into a lot of the drama and the bullshit. Uh, no, I mean, uh, I mean, in my real life, I'm a huge shit talker, like, when I play the game or play the so, like, a lot of people trash. Hi here, you gotta stop, little dude. <laughs> Don't worry, we got kids too, man, and grand and, and grandkids for me. As a matter of fact, this is the only father son uh, podcast in boxing, man. I mean, we're father son. I respect that. I respect that. Thank you. Thank you. I'm, I'm a huge trash talker, so you know a lot of the stuff that the guys do, the antics and all that, I really don't get to me. I'm not bothered by. It. I think I actually get in their head by just not saying nothing. I'm just well, you stayed. Me. Well, you stayed very composed. Uh, I went back and watched the, uh, uh, of course, the face off that was moderated by Eddie Hearn between you and Dillian White, and he seemed uh, to talk a lot of trash. And you were very calm and cool. No, I was cool. Um, I think when when he tried to talk trash, I think we did the little uh the the table talk thing. Yeah. You know, he see that he couldn't phase me, so it was like uh, he started trying to direct it at my coach. Yeah, it was really he was really just trying to get under somebody's skin, but I really want to go for it. Like like I tell a lot of people, we kind of come from a, a different demographic, so you know, um, right, kind of know who's tough and who's for real. You know, you know who's like it's, sometimes yeah. it's for, it's the sport, so sometimes it's for entertainment. But you know, um. I be trying to stay calm because sometimes I take words a little too personal, depending on how they sound when they come out. So yeah, right, I just, right. I try to stay cool, calm, and collect. Yeah, I know, and of course, and of course, it was only a matter of minutes into the interview when Dillian White always wants to take somebody outside and fight. That never fails. Yeah, <laughs> trying that. He wasn't trying that off camera though. No, I, I'm sure. I'm sure he was not. No, <laughs> go ahead, Benji. As you were saying. No, I was. I was gonna agree with him. We're 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 New York guys, so like you could you could smell the pitch <laughs> people. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> how to you already know how the vibes is, you know, like we we talk trash, that's what we do, we do it all day. Yeah, yeah. So kind of can tell when somebody's like uh being really aggressive or it's a show, or you know, so a lot, a lot of them to me it really just be a show. Now, when you got into boxing, man, uh, well, for, 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 first of all, uh, if we could backtrack a little bit, how did you get into the sport? Now, now, I, I think in some of the interviews I've seen in the past, uh, uh, was it a father or stepfather that pushed you into the sport? It Stepfather, his name uh Don Lamar. Um, he got me in the box when I was about um uh, probably about 12, 11 or twelve. What were you I, doing? Beating up everybody in school? I ain't even I wasn't even really I got to like a couple fights. Uh I think I got to like a couple fights in the neighborhood or something. I can't believe anybody would try to take your lunch money. I don't see it. <laughs> no, I ain't really get bullied, but uh I can't remember what you know how kids just have problems over anything. Yeah. So, um, in my younger days, I got into a couple fights, and he, uh, I came home one day, and he was like, "I heard you was fighting this and that, and you always fighting. I'm gonna just take you to the gym." Yeah, it's been history. We've been in the gym ever since lockdown. Focus isn't it, that energy. Isn't it crazy how the streets have evolved now? All that violence and gunplay used to be just go out and settle it, but now it, it's 
used to have to have hands back then. I mean, they were still shooting and stuff back then, but it was way more fights than it, you know, like yeah. than violence now. Like at least, uh, at least back then, you can get somewhat of a fair opportunity. I mean, I'm 51 years old, so I remember kids in grade school just going out in a big kid, uh, you know, in a big circle surrounded by kids, and yeah. kids just duked it out, man. I first of all, I would have been terrified of my own parents had I ever brought a weapon to school. You know, I mean. Uh, yeah, anybody would. I, I would have got the uh, black beat off me. I'd have brought a uh, gun. <laughs> well, and now, what about and now, what about boxing idols? You, you know, when you get into the sport, you, did you have anybody that you kind of like, look, kind of look, looked up to, or that you were watching on TV as a hero? My uncle Jared kind of was always in the boxing. Um, I got into boxing probably like uh, later on in my childhood. So most of the people that I always seen growing up was more older. So um, most of my idols in the game was older guys. Like um, Holyfield's my favorite boxer. Um, yeah. Guys like Riddick Bow, Larry Holmes, you know, Ali's a great to everybody. Tyson. Yeah. Most of the old fighters, uh, Sugar Ray, Marvin, all those guys, they had like the craziest <laughs> boxing. Movie. Yeah. So you're an old school guy. Yeah. Yeah. So kind of kind of in the same vein, I guess, while we're on the subject of, of people you, you enjoy watching, as you like look around the sport nowadays, um, I know they're your peers, you know what I mean? But uh, is there anybody that you like watching nowadays? Some of guys like uh I love watching Terrence Crawford. I'm a huge fan. Dude, 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 nasty. I love watching um, Tank. Tank always put on the show every time. I like how he, how he fights because he's very poised and he's kind of a slow starter. So it looks like he's just giving a rounds up, but he's really like reading and estimating. And yeah. Maybe to strike. So um, he got a huge IQ. Um, I like Loma Loma ain't been fighting a lot, though. Um, who else we got in the game? Well, it's funny I that you bring those two names up, though, because it looks like that's the one they're putting in the works now, Loma and Tank. It's rumors, so hopefully, hopefully, because yeah. you know that'll be something great for the sport right now. It's a fight that would have been a lot more sizzling about five years ago, but yeah, but you know, you, we're here now. You know, the business of boxing is kind of shaky, so like, uh, yeah. We just got to try to get them while we can. While we but can. I love what you said about Tank, though, because for a while, man, it didn't dawn on me until this last fight with Frank. And then I watched him. And there's no, and it reminds me a lot of, of one of the points I was going to bring up about your fighting, and particularly in the Dillian White fight. No wasted movement. You're very economical. Like, Tank doesn't seem like he's doing much. And as you say, it appears he's giving way rounds. But yet he's always applying pressure and coming forward, though. I noticed you do that a lot, too. You know, all your punches that you threw, especially in the Dillian White fight, they're all crisp. They're all meaningful. You're not just out they're just flinging shots no no like my coach always been strong on um jabs so like you know with the jab you always target and something you really don't just fling it or throw it loosely because you don't want to get countered so um my coach always been on us like that about pinpoint accuracy he, he really don't care if you miss the punch or even if they block it he just wants you to target or in the area so we always practice like um throwing multiple punches you know trying to throw combos and stay busy because we heavyweights and I'm more of a smaller heavyweight. So coming up, we always spar with like um a lot of smaller guys. And I think that's what give me the advantage and be able to like throw my hands at a crisp output like that. Now, when you say a small heavyweight, what do you mean by that? Because you look like a gigantic guy. I mean, uh, I you, you know, I think you came into those fights, what, in the 230s, 240s or somewhere around your fighting weight? Well, the Dilla fight, I was big in that fight. I was like two, 257, I think. Uh, in the AJ fight, I was around like 230, though. Are you a tall guy? No, see, that, that's why I said I'm a small heavyweight, because I'm only like 6'2". Wow, listen to that, Benji's only 6'2". And we think about it, it's like we walk around, like me and him are both 6'4", and people are always telling us that we're big guys. But yet, when I look at the common NBA player right now, 6'4 would be small. Feel me, 6'4 is like a point guard in the league. <laughs> I guess, man, but I don't know. I just never see it. You know, like when you look at yourself in the mirror, like you don't think like a big guy when there's guys around like LeBron size and bigger that are really, but that, you know, I look at a guy like that and think, holy shit, that's a big guy. I first got like around six feet. I used to think I was tall because I'm like probably one of the tallest people in my family. So, yeah, um, so are we. So, um, oh, I don't know what happened. You might have got a message or a text message. Sometimes it'll, it'll, uh, It'll go out. There's a camera button down at the bottom of the screen there, though. There you go. There you go. I was like, I was one of the tallest people in my family at the time. So I went to like, uh, I got an uncle that stays in Dallas, Texas. We went to the Arlington, Texas Mall. I seen so many kids, like women. 
women was like six, <laughs> four, six five <laughs> in my life. It was crazy. And now, uh, go ahead, Benji. You were about to say. I want to say just because, like he was, like he touched on earlier, and not to harp on the Dillian White fight, but it's a, a fight that, in my mind, is is bothersome. And I'm just curious about like your thoughts about the fact that you landed 23 more body shots, 27 more jabs, and only gave up six power punches. Like he only landed six more power punches than you. But when you look at like certain fights stylistically. Lomachenko landed everything more than Devin Haney except for body punches, but they give him the win on that. But see, like, uh, um, I kind of feel shaky on that, on the Loma version of it, because it's like Devin dominated the early rounds. Even though he wasn't landing most of the punches, it was like he was putting on a lot of the pressure and he was still attacking. But we all know that's kind of how Loma fights. Yeah. So it's like Loma is doing his own thing, but at the same time, he was letting Devin win. So it was like, I kind of feel like Devin did have the advantage a little bit to get the win, but I feel I was kind of more on the draw. But I feel like Devin did do enough if the judge was watching it kind of like that way. I feel like Devin did do enough to like slimly pull a victory out. I think he did. I, in my yeah. but I, I felt like a draw, at least a draw on running back. And before we get off the Dillian White topic, I see that you are still sporting your dredge, which Dillian White did promise to knock off your head, and that didn't seem to have happened. So they're still there. It's still looking good. You know, a lot of these guys be like they got power. They can do this. They can do this. <laughs> so, you know, um, I think that's an advantage. When I fight a lot of these guys after they hit me and they see, like, oh, he's not he's not phased by it, they, they act a little different. They react differently to it. Yeah. You look ugly as shit with that mohawk, too. Yeah, 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 yeah. You should have knocked that off of his head, man. That had to go. I mean, come on, man. Jesus, man. And, 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 and so I want to ask your opinion about uh, uh, something that's very polarizing right now. And because you mentioned that you're kind of an old school guy with an old school mentality, you know, these gimmick fights, when we see these MMA guys against boxers or we see these Jake Paul fights, do you like these for the sport? I know they bring eyes to the sport, but it's a very polarizing uh, topic. I mean, I, I feel two ways about it. Uh I think it's good in a sense for both combat sports, but like uh, at the same time, I think Clarissa Shields is one of the only ones I know that went over to MMA. So I think it, it only brings more excitement if we do both and they just not come to boxing. I know it's probably a money thing where most of them come to, to the boxing side of it. But um, I think it's just entertaining for both of the fans. You know, you got your boxing core fans, you got your MMA core fans. Um, but I do think, like, sometimes real boxers get overshadowed by some of those fights. Yeah. To receive some of those opportunities before another guy can cross over. Although a Jake Paul fight is a hell of a payday, though, man. But come on. Uh, I mean, come on, Jermaine. There's no way in hell he can beat Mike Tyson. If he beats Mike Tyson, my childhood is ruined. I don't care what age Mike Tyson is at. I love Tyson, but, like, but Tyson, Tyson about what, knocking on 60 now? I know. I know. And and don't get me wrong, he's sixty. He still uh punched the shit out of you, but like, oh, how, yeah. how long is that gonna last? For like, I know. yeah, that's the real part of it. And he just had to pull out of the first scheduled date because he was having some health issues too. So I mean, you know, yeah. and that that's kind of like the only form of it I don't respect. I feel like if you at least gonna hop in the sport, you gotta fight some guys that's in the sport. You gotta fight contenders, people that's really boxing, that's training hard, that get a life to it. You can't yeah. just fighting guys that want to fight you because they're trying to get a nice payday. You right. got real fighters. Well, before before I ask the question I was going to ask, because this just popped into my head, too, because you brought up Clarissa Shields going to the MMA. Um, Shannon Briggs, and I, I forgot about this until right now, but Shannon Briggs is supposed to fight Rampage on a two-way contract, right? One in boxing and then one in, in the MMA. Yeah. When, when this supposed to happen? This is my first time. That's, hearing them. that's supposed to happen in Saudi Arabia uh, uh, sometime this summer, and apparently they're doing the boxing match first and then uh -huh. the MMA fight. Because I think Briggs has gone on record as saying, "Man, that uh, he tried K uh, uh, he tried K one fighting in the past, and uh, he didn't like them leg kicks, <laughs> which nobody <laughs> usually does." <laughs> but, motherfucker, but you find somebody like Rampage. Rampage ain't super old yet. He still got a little go in it. Yeah, well, that's why he's got to sign the contract because I think Rampage kind of thought like, okay, man, we'll get the boxing fight out of the way, and then maybe you won't honor the MMA part. You know what I mean? Like, you still got to see that dude in the cage, you know? Yeah, that's, a, that's a whole different animal, right? Yeah, you're not kidding. On that, though, is do you feel like 
there's some like kind of like a, a looming factor when a guy comes from the UFC or MMA to boxing where we feel like um like the boxers gotta protect the sport. You know what I mean? You can't let those guys come in and beat you. In some way, yeah. Cause if Francis would have came and beat Joshua like that, I think personally would have hurt the sport a little bit. Like it would have been so much shit talking. It would have like we would have never heard the end of that. I know. So, to some degree, yeah, we had to like uh <laughs> we had to like win some of those fights and knock them yeah. to uh keep the sport relevant because you know we were struggling for a while compared to MMA, you know, uh, how they was growing rapidly. I, I feel like we finally um trying to make a statement and come back. So we gotta, you know, we gotta keep that going in, in order for people to take us serious as a sport. And now, speaking of those mixed fights, now, now, speaking of those mixed fights, uh, uh, of course, Tyson Fury, a guy who you spent a lot of time in camp with as a sparring partner for, he uh, got dropped by Francis Ngannou, man. What was going through your mind when that happened? Uh, not too much, honestly. Uh, I know Francis can hit. I'm, I'm an MMA guy myself. I, I watch it. I watch the sport. So uh, I know, like, seeing Francis fight, I know he can hit. I know he, he, he has to pack a punch. He knocked a lot of people out. But um, you know, but you know, Tyson Tyson can take a punch. We seen him get dropped by Water. Shit, I seen him get dropped by Steve Cunningham. Yeah, who we've had on the show before. Yeah, 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 yeah. That's right, man. And and Stevie is really, by all means, a cruiserweight. Yeah, he's he's really a cruiserweight. Yeah, he got the skills to pay the bills, but he's really he's really a cruiserweight. Tyson Tyson Fury does have a questionable chin, but the thing is, the thing that where I was going with it is. is a lot of people really thought just based on that knockdown, Tyson Fury lost that fight. But I really don't think the fight was close. Other than no, that. I don't think he lost. I mean, like from what I've seen and what I viewed of it, um, I don't think you got to watch all of it. I don't think he lost it. I think like he won, he won majority of the rounds besides a couple. Maybe if I give Francis anything, I probably give him like two or three rounds. Me too. I think he did a hell of a job though. Don't get me wrong. Like Francis did a hell of a job. He put up a hell of a good fight. But I just think Tyson did more to, to edge it out. He had Francis missing a lot. Francis was just aggressive, but the aggressiveness only works if the person is not throwing punches back at you, and Tyson was countering. Now, you've been pretty candid in past interviews before uh, about the fact that you have walked away from the sport on three different occasions and come back to the sport. You know, if I can delve into that a little bit, what was it that made you walk away? And more importantly, what was the motivation to come, to keep coming back? Man, I ain't gonna lie to y'all. Like I was a, uh, I was a fat ass kid. I love to eat. So <laughs> at thirteen, shit, I was already like one eighty five. I was a big guy. So my problem with the sport was like I train all the time and I never fight. And then I used to hate running. Like I used to try to hide from coach when he used to make it run. <laughs> it was like I'm doing all this workout. I got to do the workouts I hate just to go to meet. I mean, just to go to uh, meets and never fight nobody. So it was like. After a while, I started getting tired of it. So I was like, I just quit, try to find other things to do. But every time I quit for too long, I think the longest I probably quit was like six, seven months. And what's the motivation to come back? Family? No, honestly, I'm just bored. I started to miss it after a while. Like, yeah, um, I'm, I'm kind of athletic, so I'm good at a lot of sports. But boxing just gave me, a, um, I don't know, it's something different about like, uh, to me, it's like a warrior sport. I look at it like I like medieval stuff, like old school stuff, like gladiators and shit. Yeah, yeah. So I look at it like the old school Roman days, even though they was fighting because of some bullshit. But like those dudes was warriors. It's only me and you in there and made the a best man survive. You know, we, we fight. That's how I felt. So like once I started being able to hit people and notice my own skills and notice what I could do. I just start getting more and more of a passion of it. And then every time I get bored and I quit, I just get bored at home. I want to go back to the gym. I miss punching on people. I, I miss yeah. people. <laughs> now, I'll be pretty candid with you, though, man. When I watched the Joshua fight back, even at the halfway point of the Joshua fight, I had you up by a couple of rounds. Yeah, I think I ain't going to lie. I think I, I still get Joshua that fight. I honestly think he won that fight. But, uh, man, I just I couldn't get out of my own head. Me and my coach talked. My son is acting crazy right now. Me and my coach talk about it a lot, though. Um, I can't get out of my own head about it. Like, I was, I think the first five rounds, I was doing good. I was countering them good. I felt like I had him nervous. I had him worried. Um, he noticed that he hurt me with, like, no basic punches. So, I think I was, like, breaking down his game plan. 
until they started collar tying. And once I got hit with like the second, third collar tie, I think it's a point in the video where I uh I look at the ref and like you don't see him holding my hand. The ref raises his shoulders like I don't see nothing. I I basically was out of the fight at that moment. From the like six round on, he just did what he wanted to. Yeah, that was not the best refereeing job either. Certainly not. Yeah. Uh, Blame myself because you know I'm I'm not at home. I'm in England. This the hometown guy. This they ref see from over here. You know, like I should have yep. expected that. I should have expected that, and I should have just stayed calm and fall out of the situation instead of being mad or getting angry at him and losing focus at what I gotta do. And I feel like AJ must not have been that mad because at the end of the fight, he seemed to want to slow dance with you. That was quite a, 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 a that was quite a romantic moment. He seemed to really. <laughs> He seemed to move in. He seemed some, to move in and want to waltz with you at the end. Yeah, some people, you know, some people just got ego. <laughs> so I, don't, I, I guess at the end of the fight, he had got his confidence back, and he, he I can't remember exactly what he said to me, but he, it was some tough shit. Like he was trying to be tough. So I, yeah. that's why I put. We was finna get on that. So I'm like, yeah, dog. Those, I'm not one of them guys. Those you never sound tough, no matter what they say. Yeah, there's no way in hell you can sound tough by one of those UK. Except when Tyson Fury's calling you a dosser, man. That kind of sounds kind of that kind of sounds kind of cool. But I, now, but, but, but I, now but, but now now have you had enough paydays now where you're at the point where you don't have to work a day job or do you still work a day job? Uh, no, I, I don't work a day job no more. Um, I mean, I'm really not at the point <laughs> where I shouldn't be working a day job. But no, I uh, dedicated my life and training to boxing now so I can have uh, more time and be more ready more focused on what I got to do because coming Thanks. up off job and having to work is pretty hard. I know a lot of people do it, but it's, it's pretty hard to do to be able to maintain and your body yeah. needs red. So, so it's a lot that you working against yourself with. And now you do have children as well, right? You do have kids. Yep. I got three kids, two girls and a boy. And so the, oh, I hear that Benji's girls. So that means man, that's, Oh my God, I feel bad for those guys when they show up at the door and some fucking get a load of you. Holy shit. <laughs> <laughs> I'm, I'm mostly a nice guy though but most people get intimidated once they see me and they know who I you're am a nice guy, you're a nice guy though some guy's coming over and want to take your daughter out on the town i you know i speak from experience and so does benji's over there i mean he's got you know he's got my grandkids man and you, you, you know i have a granddaughter or whatever man but you know it's yeah. never a, it's never a thought that you're comfortable with ever you know no could you <laughs> Once, so you instantly go back to your own mind. You'd be like, hell no, that's not, that's not happening. I'm not, I'm not letting up. Yeah. Yeah, you're, getting I'm, up. you're getting broken up a little bit. <laughs> uh, 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 you're getting a broken connection a little bit. Wait a minute, we'll yeah, see I if mean, it works. Yeah, we're always at the yeah, we're always at the mercy of the internet in these pod in the podcast world. Um, you know what I mean? So like we're used to it at this point. I want to ask you because you brought up earlier, and and you know I I love to cook and eat. I'm curious what, what what's the go to post fight meal? I ain't gonna lie, me uh, I like some lamb chops. Like uh, my girl mom makes some great lamb chops. They so damn good. Um, That's what's good about being a heavyweight, right there. And you can eat a little bit. <laughs> lamb. I love lamb. I ain't gonna lie. As long as it's cooked right, it's not super gamey. It's great. And now you, and now you just fought in May. So, uh, uh, so what's the plan? Do you have you do you have a date for your next fight? Uh, no, I don't have a date right now. But um, we just sent a gym stand ready, still working. So, you know, uh, add more stuff to the bag. Add more to my craft. Now, if you can assess the heavyweight division, man, uh, it, it, it's odd and popping right now. I mean, there's a lot of great talent there, man. You know, if you could play matchmaker and 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 make yourself a fight, is there anybody out there that stylistically, like, you see yourself matching up with? Well, I think uh, I'm trying to think. I think those belts are coming around again because I think if Usa's them signed that rematch, then I think two of them got to be vacated. Yeah. So, uh, WBA, who got that WBA? I can't remember who won. Michael Hunter won that fight against uh, Cassius Cheney. Yeah, I, yeah. I, oh, did he? Oh, we've had Cassius Cheney on before too. Yeah, and, and we've had Michael Hunter on. Yeah, I'm pretty sure that he did though. Yeah, so that one will be open. And then, uh, you, you know, and then you got a lot of. And it's funny that we were talking about Dillian White because I don't know how old the video was, but I just saw Martin Bacoli scaring the crap out of Dillian White and calling him out. And Dillian White scurried up the stairs, man, running his ass off to get away from him. <laughs> 
I want my rematch with him, but I, I probably know I ain't gonna get. It. I want both. I gotta avenge both of my losses on some Lennox Lewis shit. But I don't think yeah. I don't, yeah hard work before I get it. So I'm trying to get Dylan before he retire, and AJ probably gonna try to make me have a belt or something first. Yeah, he probably yeah he probably will like especially with the role he's on, you know what I mean? Like he, he you know the buzz is kind of back out on him again a little bit, AJ. You know, especially with the Francis performance. Yeah, I ain't gonna lie, him knocking people out just gave me more like it gave me more confidence than I already got. Yeah, just, like, no yeah, doubt about it. it. Now you spend time, as I mentioned, sparring with Tyson Fury, man. Like, what would be the biggest takeaway from sparring Tyson Fury? Like, what what like wisdom do you think you gleaned like the most from working with a guy like Fury? Uh, learning learning more of my timing and range, learning how to use it off the angles I be trying to take. So like. Tyson's not the fastest guy, and his arms is long as shit. So it, yeah, it's, it's timing. You think like when he get he see you moving and he start punching in your head, you like I can get away, or you would think like he too far back. But by the time you get close enough, you get a hit. So it's yeah. really like his timing. He got some great timing as far yeah. as how he throws his punches and how he uses jab to put punches together. So I really was. I really was um, <clears throat> like learning off of that, you know, um, examining how you do that, trying to learn something off of that. And um, I got some of my better defense uh, being able to counter off punches while while I was sparring him because I had the movie so long and said I had to yeah. move. So I think slipping and punching was a big uh, add on too from that cap. Yeah. So question we always like to ask on this show, especially because, uh, you know, it's just one of the things you got to know. So, <laughs> the mountain. Or a boxers for Jermaine Franklin. Oh, my top five. Your Mount Rushmore. Hey, Jermaine, come on. History lesson here. There's only four faces on Mount Rushmore. Oh, my bad. <laughs> man, uh, you don't even got to come up with five. Only four. Let me see. We got Ali. Of course. We got Ali. Um, mm, dang, y'all put me on the spot. Hold on. Well, 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 well you did mention Evander before. Yeah, but see, I gotta think about everybody that's I know, I know. Grace the sport. Uh I think I probably I think Rocky can grace there, Marciano. No doubt. I like that. I, I like that he's going old school. Um let me try to come a new a little uh, a little newer. Um uh, Ooh. Does a guy like Floyd belong on there? See, he do, but at the same time, you got Sugar Ray Robinson and Leonard. So it's yeah. like, okay, her take. So now, you got him. So you got him behind those guys, then for sure. Like an arguable statement, because Floyd has beat the most world champions, but Sugar Ray Leonard had some hard ass competition, and he was yeah. being, got, you know, no beat. Question. And Tommy Hearns, them like hard defeats. He made Robert Duran quit at the yeah. party out. So like. You know, he made he got some hard ass statements, some classics. Yeah. And I'm not a guy that gets caught up in like half in the heaven. Oh, I think the Floyd, I think the Floyd era like really made people think that you couldn't be on on the list of greats if you had if you had losses, man. But I, I don't I don't find that to be true. No, no. I mean Floyd just kind of changed the era. So that's like you said, that's what everybody started thinking once he did it. Like, yeah, yeah. you got you can't you can't take it L to look pretty in the record. But uh yeah. Mm, yeah, I, I, I'm going to put Floyd up there only because his feet. Uh, he battled with a two-time undisputed champion. He, yeah. uh, he got belts in like, what, two, three different weight classes? Five, I believe. Five. Yeah. And I think he defeated I think he, he defeated the most world champions. I'm not 23. Yeah. Yep. Yeah. That's but a yeah. lot. That's a lot. There. Um... Dang, who else I got? Got to round it out. Yeah. Boy, we put Jermaine to work tonight. Yeah, y'all got my brain mocked <laughs> about six times thinking about this. <laughs> yeah, but think about the next time you go on an interview and somebody asks you this. Boom. See? We've prepared you now. Mm. We trained Jermaine Franklin tonight. <laughs> I don't know if I I don't know if I want to go a big guy or another small guy. You okay? Uh, oh. He's really thinking about this four. I know. He's sure. really giving it thought. Yeah, I respect that though, man. I respect that. A lot of guys just rattle off names, man. Jermaine isn't taking this lightly. 
everybody go off the people they like. I try not to be biased off of like the stuff. I, I like see. that. Yeah. Uh, I don't know. I'm gonna have to go like a like a. I I you know what? A lot of people might not think that's a hot take, but I will throw Roy up there. I throw Roy Jones up there. Oh, I love that you threw Roy up there. Are you kidding me, man? Captain Hook? Yeah, he got that. He got that crazy monstrous left. Uh, that mutant left bicep, man. Roy's my guy. I throw the Roy bicep up. is in a league of its own, right there. <laughs> <laughs> and now, so like, uh, you, you, you know, I want to get your honest opinion on some of your peers in the heavyweight division. Though we talked a little bit about Fury, though, but just like a, you know, just a quick statement about like some of these guys, you know, who are, are, are hanging around that top ten, top fifteen. Uh. uh how do you lot? So I kind of can tell you a little bit about, you know, some of everybody like um How about Zhang? How about Zhang? Yeah, I like Zhang, but Zhang, oh, Zhang got the power, but Zhang don't got the stamina. So I can make Zhang work and after the sixth round it's my show. Uh uh and now do you think uh, now do you think Deontay Wilder made a good decision in stepping away from the sport? Um, I mean, in my opinion, I honestly feel like um in this game you have to have the you have to have the self-confidence so you have to be aware to know like when you're done and in this game if you feel like you're done or you unsure that you're done then i feel like he made the right decision step he, hasn't, he hasn't been the same since tyson fury got to him man i don't think i think he i think he made the right decision because whenever you feel like you might be done then yeah i think that it's time to hang it up how about a guy like joseph parker he's been on a real a real big resurgence I've Parker, I, I, uh, Joseph Parker, he he punches a lot. I, I like him because he got a nice output. Uh, um, he gonna bang, but I think I think I can I can uh, use angles against Joseph. Okay, now what about a guy that everybody seems to be referring on the internet as the boogeyman of the heavyweight division? I mentioned him earlier, Martin Bacoli. I mean, I don't know how the fuck Martin got that name. He lost to Michael Hunter, didn't he? Uh, yeah, I'm wondering that too. Is it maybe just his sheer size? He is a large man. They say like people was dodging him and shit, I guess. Yeah. So, uh, people want to get paid in the sport, so y'all can't just like be throwing names out there and y'all don't want to give people no money to fight the guy. Now, what about a guy who everybody's saying could possibly be the future of the division, uh, uh, Jared Big Baby Anderson? I like I like Jared. Jared got a real stark style. He got a real mean jab. He throw nice combos. I think he can add more punches to the combos though. And um he just gotta show more promise on that back foot because that Charles Martin fight he was getting caught going backwards. Benji, do you think of any heavyweights? I mean, you pretty much rattled off any of the ones that that I would have thrown at him. I'm you trying to think, yeah. I'm trying to <laughs> I want to get Daniel a show too. I got I got Daniel up there. I'm trying to go at Daniel. He got that uh, WBO. I think he just beat up Hergovich. Oh yeah, Dubois. That's right. Yeah, and yeah, and and now he's put on like two straight good performances because before that he beat uh, Jarrell Miller too. Yeah, yeah, he straight. He got a nice jab. He throw nice combos, but it's hard questionable. Let's not now speak. Oh, go ahead. Let's not forget that he also beat Usyk. Yes. I mean, I, I, come on, come on. I mean, come on, Jermaine. Was that a clean body shot? It was clean, but sure what I looked at, like, if the ref seen it as a low blow, then Usyk was just selling it. He would have got up if the ref would have counted it as a knockdown. He would have got up. He deserves an Academy Award. Yeah, you know this box. Never had a belt. <laughs> half of these guys got their own little tricks in the trade, but I'm telling should, guys, yeah. I'm like, this guy's Ukrainian. He is not going down like that. You're going to have to hurt that man for real. He, he is not a wink wink. He just went two whole fights with Joshua, and Joshua lumped him up a couple times. Y'all think? Yeah, no, yeah he did. From that jab to the body. I mean, what did he throw? Right hand? Yeah. yeah. And that was a nice body shot, though. Don't get me wrong. I think it did hurt him. It, it should have been like a countdown. The rest should have started counting. But I think he would have got up. Now, just to start a little trouble, because we'd like to do this on the show. Now, when you call out a guy like Daniel Dubois, like what is it specifically that you see in him without giving away too much of the game plan? Like, why is he a good opponent for you? Like, what does he do or not do uh, uh, that makes you think you can capitalize and put a guy like him away? And we, we study everybody. I like Daniel. I mean, really, really. So when I fought Daniel, when I fought um Dylan, I mean, when I fought Dylan, um, I sparred Daniel a little bit, and his coach was talking crazy. Like, they was just destroying me and all this shit. I mean, people was having their way. I was dealing with jet lag first time overseas and all that. But, you know, a spar is a spar. It is what it is. So, yeah. 
coach was just talking crazy and i've been fired up ever since then because i want to know like was daniel feeling that way or was daniel talking shit? because if so you know we we can make it happen now 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 uh at one of the press conferences and now going back to dillian for a minute man it did get a little chippy and dillian white actually uh put hands and tried to shove uh, uh your promoter what was the what was the root of all of that I don't, I don't know what what his problem was with Dimitri, but he knew not to push us though. Yeah, he sure did. <laughs> yeah, I mean that just seemed like to come out of left field, like to turn and push the littlest guy up there. You know, I mean, I don't, I, I don't know if him and Dimitri had some words because, like, when Dimitri came up there, they started saying something to each other. Yeah, and he pushed them, but I don't know if they had words in the past or you know, like before. You know how it be sometimes when you're making deals and yeah back and forth so i don't know what what all happened or how it all went down but yeah but yeah he was just trying anything to get under our skin like yeah that. and now you've made mention before about like uh expressing an interest i don't know if you've started doing this or if this is something that you're planning for after your boxing career but uh and you, you know forgive me uh if i'm wrong on any of this but uh somehow you want to get into teaching or working with kids yeah like um i want to start coaching and, um as far as the teaching it's not necessarily teaching but um uh, I want to start a nonprofit. I've been trying to get stuff together for a couple of years, but you know, you need funds and board members and all type of stuff. So right. uh, I'm still working on it though, but I want to get a nonprofit, you know, uh, just for the kids around the area, show them something different, like Saginaw, Michigan. A lot of people don't get to see outside of Saginaw, Michigan. It's already a small city. It's kind of violent. So it's right. something that they can see different, open their mind a little bit to different stuff. We gotta be some champions that have come out of Michigan, right? Oh, uh, 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 Chris Bird. We've had Chris Bird on twice. He's out of yeah. Michigan. I think Michigan still holds the reign, the title for uh, most most title holders. I think honestly, if I'm not mistaken. And then of course the legendary Detroit uh, Cronk Gym. I mean, come on, man. I mean, you know, th th I mean that was a breeding ground for champions back in the day. Cronk had some of everybody. I think a lot of the greats then then had their way across Cronk Gym. So even Tyson Fury used to train there for a little while. So when would you like to be fighting on a world title stage again? Like, when do you think, like, how many fights away, uh, you know, do you feel like you are for putting yourself back into a, a title picture? Do you feel like it's uh, it's feasible in, like, 2025? Um, Hopefully, hopefully. Um, I, You know, I'm going to make a push. So we know how boxing is when everybody got obligations and shit. So hopefully I can make my way and start trying to climb my way back up in these rankings to the top 10. And once I get in the top 10, you know, I can make my stake and fight somebody that's up there. Now, do any of the alphabet organizations currently have you ranked? Um, last time I checked, if I'm not mistaken, I think I was ranked by the WB or either the WB or the IBF. I was ranked for both titles. I think one I was ranked for kind of high, like nine or eight or something. But uh, after a couple people fought, it moved down to like 14 or 15. And then the other belt took me out the ranking. Yeah. Right, geez. I think it's one belt right now. Not as baby. now. I gotta ask you now. I'd like to ask if you had to fight the round of your life, or you had to pump yourself up for, for uh, you, you, you know to put on you know three four minutes of hard ass sparring or training. What's the go to music for the nine eight nine assassin? The go to music. Yeah. Uh, probably my cousin. No love, peace. He was a rapper from Saginaw before he, you know before he passed. But um yeah, my cousin um no love peasy get me turned up. Any song, any song I get fired up in the gym, I can give him all after hearing it. Now Benji's is a hip hop head, and I bet you he's never heard of him. Don't be, he's, a guy, he's a guy from the city, no love peas. I can uh I can send you some of his music. Yeah, please do. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I mean, Benji's loves the, uh, and I'll have Benji's, uh, you know, send you a friend request, like when we get off of here, man. But uh, yeah, y y you know. I me being 51, I'm stuck in a little bit of a time warp. I'm not up on all the cool current stuff. You know how it is, Jermaine. You know, you when you get a few, you when you get a few too many birthdays under your belt, you know. I know it is. Y'all are new y'all New Yorkers. So what what borough are y'all from? Oh, we're in upstate. We're near Syracuse. It's probably the biggest city that you would know. Yeah. Oh, yeah, y'all from Syracuse. Okay. Okay. Actually, we're right near the boxing hall of fame. Uh we, we, we were just there for Hall of Fame weekend, man. And uh yeah, so we're practically right in the backyard, man. Okay, yeah, y'all gonna be seeing me out there. It's Damn right, and and, and 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 you know what? You have such a fan friendly style and such a great demeanor that you know, regardless of of, of whether you're not whether or not you're inducted or not, a lot of guys just could just come in for the weekend, man. And it's just a great, great, great time for the fans, you know. Yeah, yeah. no, I'm a, I'm a, I just say I'm a real. I don't want to say it like I'm a real people's person, but uh, 
I just treat it like I'm a regular guy, man. I hear a lot of stories about athletes being assholes and egotistical. Yeah. And I, like, I don't understand it. Like, I guess I never had the benefit or the luxury of being treated that way my whole life. So, like, I'm just me. I'm just a regular person. I treat people with the same respect they treat me. Yeah, what, I'm was not, your upbringing, I, what was your upbringing like, if you don't mind me asking, man? Like, were you getting in a lot of trouble young, or was there, like, a chance in your life that you could have went down, like, a bad path? I wasn't, I just put it like, I wasn't the worst kid. I was bad, but I wasn't the worst kid. I didn't have, I didn't have the hardest upbringing. You know, my mama did her best. We struggled a little bit. Right. I had the hardest upbringing. My real problem was between me and y'all, I like money. So, you know, I can't go in too much detail, but y'all know, yeah. I want to make changes. So, like, I know the way I was and how much ambition I had. If I didn't find nothing else to save my life, it would have destroyed my life. Well, it's all about the evolving, man, you know, at the end of the day. But, you know, I tell people all the time who will listen, man, I like the package that you put together, man. And and I implore people to go, like, watch you fight, man, because, you know, the chin is there for a big guy, man. Lots of stamina, man. I love the fact that you're a committed body puncher. I feel like that sometimes is a lost art in the sport, man. My coach used to be cussing, <laughs> my coach used to be cussing me out about that shit. Like, yeah, man. I mean, you cracked. I mean, you cracked to the body, man. I mean, I, 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 I guarantee there had to be a, a few intestinal problems with Mister Dillian White after that fight, man. I don't know, man. He had to be. I don't know. I'd like to have got a gander at what his piss would have been looking like afterwards. He had to be hurting a little bit, man. I mean, you were beating that body pretty good. And as I said, I like the fact that you throw the shots. And they're not just, you know, you're not just out there just just winging haymakers like like we see a lot of the heavyweights do. Everything seems to be like with intent and meaningful. And you really are seem like you're one of those guys who I remember like Mike Tyson saying back in the day about punching with bad intentions and trying to punch through a target, man. Everything seems to really be meaningful. Yeah, when you're trying to hit somebody, you got to hit them for real. I can't play with them. Like if I want to tap on you, I stay back and relax a little bit. But when I come in there, I'm trying to hurt something. Well. I look forward to seeing you fight again, man. I hope you'll stay in touch, man. You've been a great guest. We'd love to have you back on, man. We consider you a friend of the show, man. You're stuck with us now. Appreciate y'all. I'll most definitely be back on. Yeah, yeah. Please come back on, man. And certainly keep us posted, man. Like, whenever things are happening, man, we'd love to have you back on to promote your next fight, man. And you do whatever we can, man. All right. I got y'all. I appreciate y'all. Appreciate you, man. Appreciate you, man. Thanks for doing this, man. It was a real pleasure, man. Thank you. Yeah. Have a good night, man. We'll talk to you soon, my man. Thank you. All right. There he goes, folks. The 989 assassin meets the 315 samurai. I think he was uh, I think he was honored. <laughs> that right there, man. That right there is the guy I'm pushing my chips in on, man. You know, you can say what you want about two losses on his record, man, but I look at him as 24 and 1, not 23 and 2. The Dillian White one, man. I'll say it right now, man. The, you know, to quote, who was it? Reggie Johnson that told us Politrix? Yeah. Yeah, I mean, there had to be some politics going on. The fight was in England. Eddie Hearn's got a hand in it. He backs Dillian White. I don't know, man. If people can go out there and find it on the internet, man, and not just find highlights of it, man, it's a 7-5, to five, possibly 8-4 fight all day long, man. I don't know I don't know what was going on, man. But uh, And he fought Anthony Joshua to a tough draw, too. Took him all the way. Lost the unanimous decision, man, but went uh, uh, you know, the whole distance, man. Didn't get dropped. He's a durable heavyweight with a hell of a chin. Hell of a, uh, uh, a lot of punching power. Committed to going to the body, man. Crazy, crazy good engine, man. Well, you could you, you could say, though, that, that footage can be destroyed because uh, Devin Haney's pushing for that to happen with the Ryan Garcia. He wants all of it removed. Yeah, and of course there was talks that he, when he was when he was petting his record, could have potentially lost a fight down in Mexico and had that shit scrubbed. So yeah, you could certainly get shit scrubbed off the internet, man. You got to have a hell of a good uh, a good publicist and a good team behind you, man. But you can make sure something doesn't see the light of day, man, and have that shit erased. I mean, people say the internet is forever, and most of the time, granted, it is, man. But I mean, I don't know, man. You tell me and send me the link. Anybody out there, if you can find the whole Jermaine Franklin versus Dillian the Body Snatcher White out there anywhere in internet land, man, and send me the link, man, because all I can find is highlights. I found a video on YouTube where they literally show every punch that was landed. I think I sent you that last night. But uh, uh, but other than that, to find it in its whole, whole, the whole duration of the fight from rounds one to 12 with commentary, with, the, you know, all the shit that we're used to seeing, like we're sitting down to watch a fight. I mean... And I got to say, man, like this this episode, as we're doing it right now, it is uh, June 
5th. This will probably air after this, but but I'll bring it up anyway, man. Super excited, man, for this weekend, man. What a weekend of fights, man. Friday, a stacked card on the zone of uh, of some of our uh, some of our friends that we've had on the show, man. Uh, you know, three of our favorite guests. Saturday night, uh, possibly the best fight of the year uh, happening on the zone between uh, uh, Estrada and Bam Rodriguez. Over on ESPN for free, you can watch uh, uh, our guy, Steve the Dragon Claggett, taking on possibly one of the pound-for-pound pound best in the sport, Tiafimo Lopez. We're pulling for Stevie. Yep. I, I, want, I, I You saw my comment, man. I want to see Stevie pull it out, man. Well, I made sure that I went back and I edited the post and purposely tagged him in it too, man, so he would see it, man, because, I, you know, I'm friends with him on there, and I thought, why didn't I do this at the beginning, man? So I went back and I edited it and actually tagged him in it, so friends with him too that's why i tagged him in the comments yeah so i'm really hoping that he can pull it out man but uh you know as i'm saying man this will probably have aired after those fights man but you know certainly we'll see how uh, uh our comments will age because if i could throw out some predictions here i think all the guys that we've had on our show are going to fare very well of course we've had uh sog on here a couple times uh gerald mcclellan jr he's fighting on the card uh, the Wolf, Elijah Pierce, is fighting on the card. And uh, our boy, um, Malik Mayhem Montgomery, who uh, we have a new episode up with him right now. I wanted to make sure I got that out before his fight. Uh, he will also be fighting. And uh, I predict victories for these gentlemen. Ooh. Yeah, I don't see why anything's going to be any different or, or going to change, man. These guys are going to keep on building on their careers, and it's so important, and I put a post up there. Make sure we're supporting these guys, tuning in, man, watching their fights, man, so the you know, so the turnout looks good. If you can show up in person, man, that's great. If you're not in the area, man, tune in and watch, man. Like, let's make sure that the viewership is good, man, because these guys are the future, man. You know, these guys are the next generation of champions right here. With that being said, like and subscribe. Hit the notification bell. Find us on Facebook because we're always chatting on there like we just talking about. And shout out Gary Busey because I can go 15 seconds with anything. And big thank you, man, to Jermaine Franklin, the 989 assassin straight out of Michigan, man, for coming on here, man, and chopping it up with us tonight, man. Honor and a pleasure to have him on, man. Uh, uh, we can now say that the big man is a friend of the show, man. We look forward to having him back on again, and we eagerly anticipate and look forward to his next fight. And, some, and him putting some damage on somebody real soon and getting on here to talk about it, man. So remember, stay tapped in, man. And remember, if you want to be a champion, you got to roll with the champs.